my dear friends in Christ, we give God all the glory, all the worship and adoration as we are getting into the Word of God. We are asking Lord to use His Word to strengthen us and to transform us in the name of Jesus. And I'm reading from Isaiah chapter 54, verse 16 to 17. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 16 to 17. And I am reading from the New King James Version. Mm-hmm. Behold, I have created the blacksmith who blows the coals in the fire, who brings forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the spoiler to destroy. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Amen. This is My dear friends in Christ, this message of this night shall be based on the reading that we have just read. And the Lord is saying to his people, Israel, through his instrument, prophet Isaiah, and saying, Behold, I have created the smith, the blacksmith, even the blower of the coast that made the coast to be in fire. The Lord said he is the one that made the blacksmith. He is the one that gave him the power to make even the fire. And uh, that he bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And he said, and I have created the waster to destroy. I want to tell you something. That there is something called waster. There is a spirit called waster. I wouldn't have known about this until the scripture have pointed out that there is something called Wester. I have created the Wester to destroy. In other words, the children of God are meant to be on ground, praying on their knees, praying against Wester spirit. And you may be beginning to wonder, what is Wester spirit? Even without you knowing about it before now, the name suggests what they are meant to be doing. And that is simply to waste the life of people, to waste the destiny of people, to waste the prayer life of people. You see a family that is going well, doing well, all of a sudden there is a crisis that has terminated that family, wasted that family. That is a waste of spirit. You, sometimes you see someone doing well in life, all of a sudden, even though he has been envied and everyone wanted to be like him or her. But just at the peak of the career, you see that person falling that, like a shooting star. A shooting star is a star that it will have a wife sharp glory. It will rise and shine all of a sudden. It will go extinct. It will extinguish because there is a power that has extinguished that light, that has extinguished that star. My dear people of God, such spirit is called Western spirit. I want to let you know that our warfare tonight is against Western spirits. Spirit that are assigned, monitoring a child of God to pull him down so that he will not be what God has appointed him or created him to be in life. Let me tell you a story that one of us shared with me in the prayer line some few years ago. And uh, we came to the prayer line, just like we are in the prayer line right now. And uh, this young man told me that after the prayer line, you know, he was lying down on his couch. And uh, he slept off after the prayer line, just shortly after the prayer line. And he said he was in a dream. And uh, somebody was knocking at the door. And at the point, the person started to bang at the door. And in the spirit, he asked a question and said, who are you? And the person said, 
open the door for me. He said, but I want to know who are you. And the person said, I am power stripper. I am power waster. And my brothers and sisters, this our brother being a prayer warrior, got on his knees. He went to the door and he said, I will not open the door for you. And, he, and the spirit said, I have come here to come and visit you. He said, what have you come to my life to do? What have you come to my family to do? And the spirit said, I have come to strip you of your power. I have come to strip you of your prayer life. Your prayer is disturbing my life. I have come to take away that which is in you. I have come to waste your life. My dear friends in Christ, this is a spirit called Western spirit. And our brother said, no, I am not going to open the door for you. This is what's supposed to be for every man of child, every child, child of God in this ministry. You have to understand that you have the responsibility to be alert in the spirit, to know when the enemy is coming against you, to know when the enemy is packaging powers against you, to know when the enemies want to take away from you what you have or possess. And this Abraham said, I'm not going to tolerate you in my house. And the spirit tried to break the door. And our brother was fighting with the spirit in the spirit. And at a point, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he was able to conquer that spirit. I want to ask you a question. Had that spirit had the opportunity to come into the house, what do you think would have been the situation of the family? It is clear that the spirit would have wasted the life of the family. The spirit would have wasted the resource of the family. And this happened to be a family I know very well. That there was a time this young man came to this country and he had been struggling and he had been working so hard, but life was so full of misery. Over time, God answered his prayer. He got married. He had children. He got a good job. And uh, he was receiving a very good pay. And then all of a sudden, one day, he, his child provoked him. And uh, he just beat the child. And unknown to him, that one day, the child will go to the hospital and I will ask him, I will ask the child, what cause, what is the, the, the bruise on your body? And behold, this was the question I will ask the child. You had an accident on your body? And he said, oh, daddy beat me. Do you know that from there it was a different story? Those of you who are listening to me now from Western culture, understand that even correcting your child in your own house, the government has no room for that in the family. And this is why many family systems is collapsing. Because parents are afraid of correcting their own children. And in most cases, even the children will threaten their parents. And I tell you, the case of our brother started from that day. Before you know what is happening, the matter went to the government. The case started to grow. All of a sudden, he started to find himself in the court. All of a sudden, the place he was working, the closest suspended him there. And they told him that when you finish with this matter, then you can come back. And they suspended his salary. From that moment, the source of income of the family started to decrease. From that moment, this man went on tears. And this was a man who hadn't gotten all the papers to send this country. And the lawyer told him, look, the worst that will happen is that you will be deported back home. You see a man who was doing so well. All of a sudden, he saw before his eyes the tendency to lose everything he had got in life. Many of us that are hearing my voice now are that way. You have labored and labored and just a single mistake and just falling into the trap of the devil 
has caught you up and put you in a state of jeopardy. I am calling upon the mighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth for you. As many that are under such spirits attack, may the power of Jesus locate you and deliver you. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 65 verse 23, Say, never again shall you work for nothing. Never again shall you work for nothing. There are people that they work hard like the elephant, but they are eating like the ant. The Bible says that it shall not be so very righteous. In Psalm 1, 2, 7, 2, and the scripture says that even when the beloved sleepeth, the Lord blesses him. I am reminding you tonight. It is time for heaven to come into your situation. It is time to fight the battle of your family. Every spirit that is wasting your resources, that is making you to labor and to labor in vain, we are coming against their territory tonight. We are coming against their empire tonight. We come against their legion tonight. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. And so this young man, he now found himself in a dilemma. And one day I was praying. And the Spirit of the Lord opened my eyes and I saw a man in chains. And this man was struggling with the power pull, pulling him. Then the voice of the Lord told me, say, Behold, he is chained and he is being taken to Egypt. But he does not want to go. Let me tell you. Egypt is a place of slavery and a place of change. It is a place of bondage. There is no person in his right mind who would willingly choose to be in Egypt. But I want to let you know, when the Lord opened my eyes and I saw this man in the spirit bound with change, and the power that was dragging him was stronger than him, and he was taken to Egypt, and the voice of the Lord told me, pray for him and deliver him. Pray for him that he shall be delivered. For he does not want to go to Egypt. My dear friends in Christ, I do not know who that man was, but I went into prayers. And I started to pray against every power that was taking somebody to Egypt. Oh, Jesus, in the same way I'm praying this night for you. Those that are in chains at this hour, those that their lives are in chains, that are being taken to the land they don't desire to be, that are being taken to the place they don't desire to be, that are being taken to the land of barrenness, or to the citizens of poverty. I am calling on the mighty God for you. Let him destroy that chain tonight. Let him destroy that chain tonight. In the name of Jesus. Everything dragging you to the land where you don't belong to. Everything taking you to the land where you don't want to go to. May the fire of Jesus break that chain. May the power of the Holy Ghost break that chain. Oh, Jesus. The Holy Spirit is a yoke breaker. The Holy Spirit is a yoke breaker. I call on him now to break the yoke now. The chain that is holding the children of God down, putting them in bondage and in captivity. May that chain be broken at this hour. In the name of Jesus, let them be broken at this hour. Let them be broken at this hour. Everything taking you to where you do not belong to. Everything taking you to the land of captivity. Everything taking you to the place of regret in life. I command that chain to break now. I command the chain to begin to melt. Let them melt like Psalm 6, verse 2, where the Bible says that at the presence of the Lord, the wax will melt like a fire. Oh, Jesus, the wax will melt before the presence of fire. In the name of Jesus, every iron gets your life. Every prison gets your life. Every part taking you to the land of shame. I command them to expire. I command them to expire. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. People that are into addicted smoking. People that are into humanizing. People that are into addicted drinking. I am praying that this you be delivered tonight. That every spirit I want to drag you. To drag you to the prison or to the police net. Because you are drunk and you are driving. 
and uh, you cannot do without being drunk. I am praying for your deliverance tonight. People that their children are under this yoke, that western spirits have been destroyed. In the name of Jesus. May the power of Jesus destroy them. Every marine spirit, marine husband, spirit of Asmodeus and the incubus and incumba that have possessed the children of God, dragging them into the land of captivity. I command them now in the name of Jesus. Let their government expire. Let their government expire. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Papa, touch your people. Papa, touch your people. People that always go into the night, doing things that are very illegal, doing things that are very bad. Oh, my independent shiriba. Such captivity, I command them to be broken tonight. I command them to be broken tonight. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Every spirit wasting my life small, small, or little by little. Let them receive fire. Let them receive fire. Let them receive fire. In the name of Jesus. Let them receive fire. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Ha! Ah. Jesus. And so, my dear children of God, when I was praying for that young man, that midday, I didn't know that God was using me to save life. And it was the next day that this young man called me. You see a man cry like a baby. Something that will make a man to cry like a baby must be something terrible. Before his wife, he was crying. Well, our wife was crying. Mother was, everybody crying. He used to get up early in the morning, pray, and then go to job. But this time around, he is not going to anywhere. He keeps receiving calls. Discussing court cases, when to go to court, when next, the next hearing, for months upon months, this man was wasting away. <laughs> and he told me, brother, I don't know why I'm calling you, but my spirit told me to call you. And this was a man I lost contact with him for years. And he said, brother, if, this, if God does not intervene, on tears, you will say, ah, if God does not intervene on this brother, I will be deported back home. And there will be no hope coming back here in the nearest future. He was sitting on the keg of gunpowder. He was on, at the verge of crisis. And immediately the voice of the Lord ministered to me. This was a young man I told you about yesterday. And I told him, brother, Look at what I just saw yesterday. The Lord has made me to understand you are the person. And because the Lord said, pray for him, it means that God will make a way, no matter how bad this case was or is, that God will make a way. I got into prayers with him. I got into fasting and prayers with him. And so at the end of the whole episode, we give God all the glory that the case just died a natural death. And this young man cannot forget that which God did for him. His job was restored. And life went back normal. Because of the power of prayer. I am praying for somebody this night. That person that is in change. That the devil has already programmed that no way you will come back. That you will not come back to be what you used to be. I am praying for you this month, this night. Asking God to come and vindicate you. I am asking to come and vindicate you. Let him thwart the resources of the devil. Let him you do change or change the devil. In the name of Jesus. Let the plans of the evil ones backfire. In the name of Jesus. Oh Jesus. May the Lord deliver that young man. May that same God deliver you. 
that Eucharistic Jesus may he deliver you in the name of Jesus. That chain that is on your life that says you're not going to get married, I command that chain to be broken. Those people that are in the valley of the shadow of death, that have been kept in the valley with the chain, I command that chain to be broken this hour. In the name of Jesus, people that have been kept on Martin Horeb, all these years you have been on Martin Horeb. The Bible says in the Trimeter 12 verses, Oh, tell them that are at Martin Horeb, it is time for them to go. You have stayed long enough on this mountain. You have stayed long enough in this prison. You have stayed long enough in this crisis. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Psalm 142 verse 7 says, Set me free from my prison, that I may praise your name. In the name of Jesus. Aha. Jesus. Oh. My dear people of God. And so the Lord restored the dignity, the integrity of this young man. Unknown to him that the devil <laughs> has not given up on him. The same devil was still scheming. Plotting, trying to see any way to come back and uh, continue his mission against his life. <laughs> Jesus. One of the things I know about the devil is that he doesn't give up so easily. He will continue to fight. If one formula fails, he will take over another formula. Even in the time of Jesus, if you read Luke chapter 4, you see Jesus being tested in the wilderness. It's a beautiful story there. You know that after the 40 days and the 40 nights of fasting and prayers, which ended in Luke chapter 4, verse 13, and uh, <laughs> one interesting thing that happened there, what the Bible speaker says in Luke 4, verse 13. Do, when, the Lord, when the devil had finished all his tempting, he left him until an opportune time. What I understand by opportune time is another time. That is, the devil leaving Jesus to come back another time. You, you see, there was a time that they plotted to kill Jesus. But Jesus sneaked out. They didn't know how he escaped the crowd. They wanted to mob him, but he, he, he just left. He left them because it was not yet the hour. But that was the plot of the devil to destroy him. And so even when the devil used Judas to accomplish what he, what he did in the ministry of Jesus, it was still the same devil coming at an opportune time. Everything about the passion of Jesus or passion of Christ is still a play of the enemy coming back to the Lord at an opportune time. That is why the Bible tells us that we should pray in season and out of season. To be praying all the time. So that you build a wall of fire around yourself. So that you don't allow the devil to come and have his way. One of the mistakes Christians make is that when you pray and fast and have a breakthrough, sometimes you relax. When you go and relax, then the, you, are, you are becoming you know, porous. You, you, you are giving the enemy the opportunity to come back and to attack you. His name is Attacker. That's what he knows what to do. He has expertise in attacking the children of God. If you read Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, he said, And the, the enemy afflicts the children of the Most High. So the enemy is still afflicting the children of God today. And so when you are praying, continue to pray, don't give up. And so in the time of Jesus, even to Jesus, 
the scripture made it clear that the devil left him for an opportune time. And so, when you are praying, you must continue to be on fire. You must continue to pay down. You must continue to make sure you celebrate the word of God. And so this is our brother continued to fire prayers. He continued to be in prayers. In fact, this was one of the things that made him addicted to the prayer line. Because he told himself that the God in this ministry has saved me. I will ever serve that mighty Jesus. And so just as we finished that prayer that particular night, and he was lying down on his couch, behold, the spirit came. The same spirit that came before to his life that came to strip him of his resources, that wanted to make him to be empty, that wanted to tell him that he was going to lose his job, that wanted him to lose his family. The spirit wanted to strip him of finances. This young man had houses here and there. But at the point of this crisis, he was not contemplating selling the houses, selling his property. There are many of us that Things come into our lives, and we go so threatened to the point that we start selling the property we have in order to sustain life. We start closing businesses in order to sustain a, the head office or the headquarters. We start to do things that we wouldn't have done ordinarily. We start to sell our shares just to make sure that we have even marginal profit. And I'm telling you, as many as are under such impediment, that are hearing my voice at this hour, may the same Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one who tells us in John 8, 36, that whosoever he sets free, is free indeed. By the power of his name, I minister healing and deliverance to your life. In the name of Jesus, I minister healing and deliverance to your life. I command that chain your life to be broken. I command that chain your life to be broken. Help is yours. Every chain in your life, anywhere they are, let them begin to melt. Let them begin to melt. Every chain on your hand, every chain on your wrist, let them begin to melt now. In the name of Jesus. Help is yours. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 40 verse 4, But today I will free you from the chains on your wrist. I will bring you out from Babylon. I don't know who is in Babylon this moment. I don't know who is in Egypt this moment. The Bible tells me to tell you in Jeremiah chapter 40 verse 4, That today, not tomorrow, not next tomorrow, that today, I am freeing you. This is Jesus talking. He said he's coming to free you from the chains of the West Star. From the chains of the West Star. May he deliver you now. In the name of Jesus, let him deliver you now. Let him deliver you now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, let him deliver you. Papa, deliver me. Oh, pray your mouth and pray now. Ask him to deliver you. Enough is enough. In the name of Jesus, Papa, deliver me from every waste. In the name of Jesus, every spirit that wants to waste my life, that wants to keep me in chain, that wants to keep me in chain, let them be broken now. Let them be broken now. My boy, begin to pray now. Jesus, begin to pray now. The power of God is moving. Yes, my Lord. Don't allow him to pass you by. In the name of Jesus. And the Bible says, Psalm 116 verse 16, You have freed me from my chains. You have freed me from my chains. Begin to pray now. Ask him to free you now from those chains. Those chains do not belong to you. I said that do not belong to you. In the name of Jesus, every chain on my leg, every chain on my wrist, every chain on my ankles, I command you now, be broken now. Be broken now. In the name of Jesus. And the Bible says, Psalm 72 verse 14. Who? Oh, Jesus. Psalm 72 verse 14. He will rescue me 
from every oppression, from every violence, because my blood is the presence in sight. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, begin to pray now. Everything in my family, everything in my children, everything in my career, I command them now. Let them burn by fire. Let them burn by fire. In the name of Jesus. My people begin to pray now. Pray ourselves to break through. I say pray ourselves to break through. In the name of Jesus. Let the Lord divide our tongues. Let the Lord divide our tongues. In the name of Jesus. Every poisonous tongue. Oh, like the tongue of a snake. Brandishing is evil. Against my life. My hand is Let the Father of Jesus divide our tongue this night. According to Psalm 55, verse 9. Jesus. According to Psalm 55, verse 9, O oh Lord. Destroy them, O oh Lord. And they divide their tongues. In the name of Jesus. Oh, put your mouth and pray now. Oh, put your mouth and pray now. Pray, 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 pray. Jesus. My people, pray now. As you pray, things will happen. The tent will be broken. Jesus. I refuse to be taken to Babylon. I refuse to be taken to Egypt. I refuse to be taken to the mountain of death. Or to the violation of death. It's not my portion. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. My people pray now. Something is happening. Something is happening. Look at chairs on the floor. Look at chairs on the floor. Somebody chairs on the floor. Somebody chairs on the floor. Hey! Jesus! Yes, 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 yes. Yes, my Lord. Papa, we thank you. Begin to touch the Lord. Ask him to touch you. In the name of Jesus. Ask him to touch you. Every seat of Nebuchadnezzar that is keeping me bondage, be broken now. Every spirit of Pharaoh that is keeping me bondage, be broken, be broken, be broken. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Pray, my people. Pray, pray, pray. Don't get tired. Don't get tired. Yes, 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 yes. Even if you lose your voice in the course of the prayer, but you get what you are looking for. It's a good bargain. Even if you are sweating in the course of the prayer, and you get what you are looking for. It's a good bargain. He's us. My people, pray, pray. You can do better than prayer. You can change the frequency of prayer. You can change the amplitude of prayer. In the name of Jesus, take that prayer to this level. Take that prayer to this level. Continue to pound the ground with the prayer. Continue to pound the ground with the prayer. In the name of Jesus. Who? Oh, Jesus. Yes, my Lord. <laughs> This happened as the prayer going on. Jesus. So when this young man thought it was over, he didn't know the devil was maliciously scheming to get him, to trap him. No wonder First Peter chapter 5 verse 8 says that the enemy roars like a lion looking for who to devour. And so after the prayer, the spirit was not happy. And the spirit came at an opportune time. At another time. Knocking at his door. You know why the spirit was knocking at the door? Because the door of the family was closed to the spirit. It's very important. Do you know that there are people, listen carefully, oh, there are people that in the spirit, their door is open. Physically, you may lock your door. You may have three or four padlocks. But in the spirit, the door is open. So what it means that when the devil is coming, he says, oh, this one is already inviting me by opening the door. And the, the spirit will come in and do whatever he wants to do. This is why it is very important to be on prayer all the time. In Job chapter 1 verse 10, the Bible says, 
And the Lord gave him a hedge of protection. You know who are, whom the Lord was talking about? That was this man called Job. The devil had tried to get the family of Job, but there's no way. Because the family of Job was already walled with the file of Jesus, with the file of God, the file of protection. The windows, the doors, the roofs of the household were all closed, so the devil could not come. He could not enter. So when God was boastful of Job, he now told Satan, Did you notice my servant Job? <laughs> God was boasting of Job. And uh, Satan said, Oh, why won't you bless him? Why won't he serve you when you bless him? He gave him everything. And that was where the problem of Job started. <laughs> yes, my Lord. Jesus. But all the time that the devil wanted to enter into the family of Job, it was impossible for him. Because the family was the door, the windows, the channels through which the enemy will enter into the house has been closed. The Bible said that Job, every evening, would do a sacrifice. Every evening, he would do a sacrifice. It's it, it just like the way we come every evening in the prayer line, and we do a sacrifice, a sacrifice of prayer. We offer prayers constantly in the prayer line. We pray, and uh, through the prayer, you are building a wall of protection for your children. I told one young man the other day, if just a few days ago, who goes to sleep, would, you know, even though he had a opportunity to come to the prayer line, I told him, look, why not join the prayer line? After the prayer, you can go and sleep. You, re you receive spiritual protection. And then he announced that to join. And you can also talk to your friends and say, come, the best way to prepare for the night before you can sleep is to pray. And that's not, that's, you cannot compromise the power of group prayer. Group prayer is so powerful. The things that happen when prayer going on in the prayer line is amazing. Sometimes I wish you see what is happening in the spirit. Leviticus chapter 26 verse 8 says, And the five of you shall chase a hundred, and the hundred of you shall put to flight ten thousand enemies, and they, their sword shall, they shall fall down by your sword. This is not the word of Huawei. This is the word of God himself that has power. Jesus. So, when the devil could see that he could not enter the family of Job, then he left his way. But until when God gave him permission to go and uh, tempt Job. And that opened another chapter in the life of Job. But God, Job remained faithful to the Lord. Now, when your house is open, when the door is open, every kind of spirit enters. Every kind of spirit, all of them will be entering. Because there will be no inhibition. Nothing tells them stop. And how can we leave our doors open spiritually? When we don't pray. A prayerless family is a family that is vulnerable. A man or a woman who does not pray is very, very, very vulnerable. At the slightest breeze, he will collapse. But when you are in prayer, the door will close. The devil cannot come in. My prayer for you is that any door that is open in your life, that the, through which the devil is creeping into the family, through this prayer, I command such doors to be closed now. I command that door to be closed now. Doors of secret that are be opened for the family. I command them to be closed now. Doors of crisis that are be opened for the family. I command them to be closed now. In the name of Jesus. Doors of confusion and hostility. We command you in the name of Jesus. I command you to be closed now. In the name of Jesus. Doors of infertility. Oh Jesus. That the devil has opened a family. We command them in the name of Jesus. Let them be closed now. In the name of Jesus. Yes my Lord. The doors of infertility. That have been entered into the family. Let them expire. Let them expire. The seat of hatred. The seat of hatred. That have been coming to the family. I command them 
<laughs> Jesus. When you are making this kind of prayer, bumper to bumper, the devil will not see any room to creep into the family. Because spiritually, the family will be too on hot that the devil cannot come in. <laughs> when they plan it, the Lord will destroy it. Just about three or four days ago, a sister called me and was telling me a dream uh, she had. And she said in this dream that she saw, she saw me and I came to her and asked her about her, her, her business. Of course, her business was not doing so well. Um, money they were supposed to pay her had been suspended for months. And so before she could answer that, I asked her about uh, your child. You know, and before she could answer that, I was on my knees. She said she saw me on my knees and that I lifted up my eyes to heaven and I was pouring tears. I was praying. She said she could not hear the words I was using, but I was in agony. I was crying, pouring my heart to the Lord. And then that was how the revelation ended. Anyway, a few days later, her son, that particular son I asked her of, had an accident. And in this accident, they, nothing happened to the son. And the, the car was just, uh, you know, a minor uh, scratches. But do you know this was the arrow of accident that was projected to the family? But when the Lord saw the arrow coming, the Lord said, no, it cannot happen to my child. And so the Lord now sent an angel. And this angel came and was interceding, praying, crying to the Lord. And the heaven was able to reverse that plan. Even though that eventually an accident took place. But it was, the original intention was for it to cause bitterness. In fact, the the kind of prayer, the way she described the prayer I was doing in the spirit. She said, I was on tears, pouring my heart, crying. That means this was a situation that was meant to cause agony for the family. Something that would make the family to be in sorrow. And the Lord saw that and said, no, these people come to my prayer line, my fellowship every night to call on my name. I will not allow this to happen. And the Lord now used that prayer to divert that arrow. And so instead of causing bitterness, sorrow, instead of her losing her child and becoming, a, you know, a woman that has lost her child, which would be a heartbreak and inconsolable situation for the family, God now put the devil to shame. Ah, Jesus. I don't know any man or woman that hearing my voice this hour. Oh, Jesus, that in your family, there is already a package scheme that has been locked against you. There is a rocket of fire, a rocket of sickness, an arrow of coughing, or arrow of death that has been projected to your family, projected to your destiny. Ah, Jesus. I am on my knee this hour. I am on my knee this hour. I am praying for you. That waste of spirit that is coming to waste your life, that's coming to waste your destiny, that is coming to waste your family. I command them now in the name of Jesus. Go back to the sender. Go back to the sender. You cannot accomplish your mission in the name of Jesus. You cannot accomplish your mission. You cannot destroy my people in the name of Jesus. I command your mission in the name of Jesus to be paralyzed now, to be destroyed now, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Ah, make sure you are actively involved in this prayer. This is a prayer that moves mountains. There is no way you will be active in this prayer of this night. And uh, you will not have a testimony. <laughs> oh, when I was living in Tennessee, I had an experience. Let me share that experience with you. Maybe it's going to be a very enlightening moment for you. 
And there was this family um, back home when I was in you know, my native country. And I was always praying for them. And when I was living for United States, they were worried. Oh, brother, how, how do we continue to, how, how do we still have these benefits of your prayers? But anyway, when I came to overseas, I can, you know, I kept in touch with them. And one day, as I was a fast and praying for them, listen carefully. In the spirit, I saw a spirit that a demon that was going to attack the family. But I was, I was in between the spirit and the family. And I, I halted the spirit. And I said, where are you going to? He said, I am going to this family. I said, what are you going to do? He said, I am going there to attack them. I am going there to attack them. And uh, the spirit had told me that he must attack. I said, unfortunately for you, you cannot attack them because I am involved. That's what I told him. And the spirit said, but I am already loaded. Take note of this statement. I am already, already loaded. He said, I am loaded. Like a balloon, I am inflated. My master who sent me, loaded me, and uh, inflated me like a balloon. That I may go to that family and uh, explode the balloon. And I cannot go back without doing this. And I told that spirit, go and tell your master that there is one who could have said that that mission is canceled. You have to go back to where you came from. And the spirit said, okay, my master will be disappointed in me if I do not explode this balloon. I have to discharge it on you. Game changed. Now the mission is no more against them again, but against me at this point. And we went into warfare. I praise God for the victory God gave to his son. But you know why I'm sharing this with you? Do you know that, I, that these spirits that go and attack families, they are loaded. It could be a spirit loaded to cause sickness. When the balloon is loaded, is inflated, and the spirit comes to the family and they deflect it, in the air, the air becomes poisoned. And you are inhaling air that has been poisoned. And uh, you are having sickness in the family. You go to the hospital, I will tell you something. But you don't know that this is spiritual something. You keep wondering why is that customers, clients are no more coming to my business. You don't know that the spirit that has been sent to, to come and de detonate the bomb or to you know, explode the, the balloon, discharge its power. You see, a bomb remains not, not, you know, calm, neutral, until it is detonated. That is when you know that it's dangerous. So when the balloon is exploded in the family, you see crisis everywhere. You see people fighting themselves. You see sickness everywhere. You see attack against career. And you keep wondering what is happening. You don't know that there is a war in the house. Because a wasted spirit has been loaded to come and detonate its bomb. To come and detonate its explosive in your family. But as many as are under such crisis now, I am calling upon Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I am calling upon the nine choirs of angels. Let them come into your family tonight. Let them locate you with their heavenly GPS. And they destroy that bomb. That bomb will not explode in the family. That explosion will not explode in the family. That spirit that has come to detonate its power, its poison in the family, must not succeed. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Ezekiel 20 verse 30, I am looking for somebody who is standing in the gap, but I found no 
on. But I'm praying tonight. I am standing in the gap for you. I am standing in the gap for you. In the name of Jesus. I challenge every spirit, every arrow, western spirits that have been sent to your family to come and discharge their poison, to come and poison the family, to come and poison your lineage, or to poison your water. I'm a hereba. To poison your marriage, I cancel. I cancel. It will not happen. You spirit that are becoming against the children of God in this ministry, I stand in the gap for them. And I command you now, in the name of Jesus, go back to who sent you. Go back to the sender. Go back to your master. In the name of Jesus, you waste spirit. You waste that spirit. You cannot strip them of their power. You cannot strip them of their career. You cannot strip them of their finances. In the name of Jesus, you cannot strip them of their good health. In the name of Jesus, it's ours. I am praying now. Yeah, 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 yeah. The power of God is moving. The power of God is moving. The power of God is moving. Every arrow, arrow of coffee, arrow of death that have been projected in your family, near to self syndrome, projected in your family, and I command them now. Go back to the center. Go back to the center. I have bought that plan. I have bought that plan. In the name of Jesus. I declare that plan aborted. In the name of Jesus. I of miscarriage. I command you now. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Go back. Go back. In the name of Jesus. You cannot explode. In the name of Jesus. You cannot attack my people. In the name of Jesus. I command you now. Receive Holy Ghost. Fire. Woo. Jesus! Ah! <laughs> oh. So this is our brother. I say, who are you? He said, I am power stripper. Western spirit. All these spirits, they have their names and nomenclatures. If, this, if the door of this family was open through prayerlessness, there will have no need for knocking at the door. <laughs> the devil would have just come in. I'm believing with them. Can you imagine? You see the child of God paying rent for the house. And the spirits will be enjoying the house with that rent. Is that an insult? But that is what is happening in the fam most families, in most lives. I am praying for you. That you know how to keep your doors closed so that the devil will not come in. <laughs> Sometimes when you are driving, you come to a toll gate and you just drive through. <laughs> there are people that their they are spiritual doors are just toll gate. Any demon, even the demon born today, will just come and pass through. Demon that are wearing diapers will just come and pass through. Is that an insult? <laughs> this house. But I'm calling on the Lord Almighty to come and help you. Let him come and help you, children. Ah. Let him come and help you, children. I am covering your family with the blood of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus incubate your family. In the name of Jesus. Oh. Jesus. So when this young man prayed, challenged the spirit, the spirit left. That's what it means to be a prayer warrior, to be alive in the spirit. That's what it means for your spirit man to be alive. Not your, anyhow, spirit will just come and freeze you and do whatever it wants to do on you. That, is, that means you're not hot enough. When you are hot enough, they cannot do that because you are fire. Your blood is fire. <laughs> so this is a prayer against western spirits. A prayer against power strippers. Mm -hmm. so, sometime ago, I think this was late last year, 
I met a young man that told me a story that, oh my goodness, I just looked at him. This young man was so skillful in football. So skillful that he made it to the national team. You know what it, what it is for you to make it to the national team in your country? That means you are exceptionally good. In that same country, they were getting even buying football, uh, players from of different nationalities. But this is their own, their own citizen. And they were happy. Do you know that a day to the national match, <laughs> this young man told his coach, he said, um, I just made a decision uh, not to play this match to me. He said, why? He said, because um, I just needed to make it an urgent trip to London. What was he going to learn to do? A lady. He was so interested in a lady that he was so manipulated that he had to leave the next morning to lose an opportunity that everybody would like to have. And he made that mistake and uh, went to meet that lady and that was it. He lost that opportunity. See, today as I'm talking to you, he, nobody wants to see him there again. <laughs> This is what you call power stripper. He would have been counting in millions. He was watching his colleagues on the national team play on television. And he was three of them would have been there. Power stripper. Power stripper. <laughs> Life waster. Waster spirits. Anywhere they are in your life. Holy Ghost. Fire. Mm -hmm. I am praying that this message will uproot every Western spirit, Western demons that have been engaging a child of God. Mm -hmm. Jesus, let that blood of Jesus touch you. Let that blood deliver you. Let that blood deliver you. Every Western spirit, terrible demons in your life. Attacking your life. Oh, let them burn by fire. In the name of Jesus. Whenever you see a western spirit in action, you don't need to be told. You don't need to be told. You will see the results. <laughs> so when you say that, I mean, what do you mean? What does it mean? Or what do you mean when you say somebody is wasting resources? Even the person is, you know, not using a thing well, rendering a use a, a useful thing idle. You know, to use something wrongly, you're wasting it to damage something completely, to render something worthless. These are the the things Western spirits accomplish in the life of its victim to damage them. Render their life horrible. This was what happened to this man called Jabez. <laughs> Jabez. In Second Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 to 10. You see that in, he, even though he was more honorable than his brothers, but he, his life was full of pains. The devil wasted his life. The wasted spirit wasted him completely. And he was just living a life of shadow. He said that. But when he cried to God, he said, God enlarged my coast. And the Lord remembered him. And took away his pain. And they restored his dignity. I am praying for somebody who is under such a waste of spirit. May God restore your dignity. May God restore your destiny. May God restore you now. Every time table of the waste of spirit in your life. Declaring that from this year to this year, they will waste children from this year to this year. They will send children, your children to prison so that your children will be in the prison from this year to this year. That your resources will be destroyed from this year to this year. You will be having court cases, siphoning your resources from this year to this year. Your marriage will be miserable. I cancel it now. I cancel them now. 
I cancel them now. In the name of Jesus. I cancel them now. It shall not happen. It shall not happen. In the name of Jesus. My people pray now. My people pray now. Jesus. Jesus. I shall live my life in fullness. In the name of Jesus. I shall live my life maximally. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. I shall live my life to full capacity. In the name of Jesus. I shall be useful. In the name of Jesus. I shall accomplish my purpose of coming to this world. I shall accomplish it. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. My people pray now. Jesus. No more. No more. No more waste of spirit in my life. Anywhere that wants to waste my destiny, be cancelled now. Anywhere that wants to waste, waste my life. So that I remain single. I cancel now. In the name of Jesus. My Bible pray now. Jesus. The fire is burning. The fire is burning. I don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Pray, 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 pray. Oh, bo, 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 bo. The power of Jesus. That power is flowing now. That power is moving now. Yes, my Lord. My boy, pray, pray, pray. Pray yourself to pray through. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The only language that the Western spirits understand is the language of confrontation. If you are at the level of running away from them, you are wasting your time. They will keep running after you. <laughs> they will make you to keep crying. But I say no more cry. <laughs> they make you to blame others. Instead of seeing where you are to be blamed. So the only way to fight and defeat them is prayer. I went into prayer some time ago in a kind of, I just came to a family, I would pray for them. And the one young man came. I got a word of knowledge. And I told this young man, this spirit that is taking you to the prison, every time you're going to prison, I command it to be destroyed by fire. And I didn't know when I said that. So the people were saying, who told him that this guy just came from prison? He had been going from prison to prison. So what happened that? That this young man has... Ah, but the spirit kept him in the prison. The moment he's coming out, few months he's going back. He will commit to one. He will commit to one thing or the other. Unfortunately, he wasn't prayerful. The father wasn't prayerful. The mother wasn't prayerful. They are not happy what is happening. But they don't want to pray. They don't want to get into serious prayers. And so the devil was having his own way. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, oh. I don't know whose child is in this kind of mess. I don't know whose child is in this kind of mess. May God deliver you. May God deliver your children. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. May God deliver you. In the name of Jesus. Deliver your children. In the name of Jesus. Every activity of the West Africans. I get my children. I command them to fire. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> oh. Jesus. There are people, you just see them, they are living with a man, illegally, unlawfully, carelessly, in an in unchristian way, or the woman is living with a man, or vice versa, and they, before now it's happening, they are just living a life of waster spirit. You see the waster spirit at work, you know, in charge, making life miserable. All of a sudden, little thing they say, they don't want to marry again. In fact, this night, somebody was just telling me that kind of story. You know, the guy that just married, I just entered into this lady's life and told her to living together. So a few months, I don't want, he ran away. <laughs> Waste that spirit. Making you not to focus in life. Making you not to focus on somebody. Making you not to settle down in life. I stand against them tonight. I stand against them tonight. Spirit of drunkenness. Making people to be drinking and to drink themselves to stupor. To the level that the only thing that makes them joyful is drunkenness. Ah! Anywhere they are. Many father of Jesus. Break them into pieces in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. oh. If 
Even people say that a flat at 40 is a fool forever. Somebody at 40 years, you are still not able to really understand why you're on earth. You don't pray. You don't take things seriously. You just dabble into things, carelessly without praying about it. God is not in your life. The person is completely full. When you have God in your life, at the center of your life, Western spirits cannot have their way. They cannot come and manipulate you. Amen? Jesus. <laughs> oh, even though the people say, full at 40 is a fool forever. But already there are fools at 15 years, at 20 years. May that not be our portion anymore, Jesus. A lot of women have had their lives wasted. Oh, we don't have time to talk about this again. With that spirit, it breaks my heart when I meet young ladies. They just carelessly got into relationships. No prayer, no no consultation of God before not having accidental pregnancy. And they want to go and abort it just from one point or the other. I was talking with somebody the other day, person was telling me how this lady raised from a good family just dumbled into a, a dance of western spirits that convince her it's okay to keep boyfriends. It's okay. I mean, don't listen to your parents. They have lived their own life. This is your own time. They convince her to the point that she started keeping, you know, such a reckless life before, you know, what she took in. And they start crying. And, and they depressed her. Oh, no, this is not a big deal. You know, just going to abort it. In the course of aborting the child, the life of this... Oh. The life was wasted. She just lost her life. She died in the process of the abortion. Western spirits. <laughs> Jesus. Every spirit that at work to waste your life, I declare them paralyzed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let them be paralyzed. Let them be paralyzed. Collective captivity in families, wasting the lives of families. I cancel them now. 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 In the name of Jesus, I cancel them now. Every strategy of the Western Spirit to blindfold me, to keep my family in blindness, I command them to be cancelled. In the name of Jesus, let them be cancelled. Every Western Spirit bringing diseases, bringing famine in my family, bringing famine in my business, bomb by fire, bringing famine in the country. In the government, be destroyed now, be destroyed now, be destroyed now. Holy Ghost, fire! Aha! <laughs> Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit. Just begin to thank the Lord. You gonna thank you for the message of this night. Thank you, thank you for blessing you. We we'll give you all the glory, O oh Lord, for the great things you have done, for destroying the waste of spirits. I guess our lives in Jesus' name. We we'll cover ourselves, Lord of Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen.